and he got so mad that he pushed her down a whole entire flight of stairs. So she tumbles down the stairs, boom, 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 and she gets to the bottom and she can't get up. She can't get up. And Hi loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So I have a story that it's kind of a sad, bittersweet, happy ending story of hope. So it's going to take you kind of through a gamut of emotions, but I promise there's a beautiful, hope-filled ending. This story came from one of you, one of my beautiful subscribers. I love when you guys send me stories and you allow me to give your struggles and your circumstances and things that you want out there, you allow me to give them life, to give them legs and to let them grow. So I appreciate this so much. Again, it's a story of hope, but there's a gamut of emotions that we're going to go through. And there's a little bit of sadness in the beginning, but I promise you the way that he sent me the story, the way that he wrapped it up at the end with a pretty little bow, it's inspiration and it's hope. So you can move forward in your own life with hope for your own future. So this story is about two sisters, which I absolutely love because I have four sisters. There are five girls in my family and a brother, and we are all so close. So when I read this story, I could literally feel it. I felt the pain that these poor sisters went through as the details unraveled. So I'll be changing their names just to protect their identities. One sister's name is Jax, and the other sister is named Kelsey. So Jax had a bit of a background with, she got involved with the wrong crowd and she dabbled with substances. And although she herself never had any charges, she was a good girl, a good hearted person, just kind of with a checkered past. She got involved with the wrong crowd, but she at the end of the day was a good girl. She dabbled, she was in and out. She kind of hung out with the wrong crowd. She dated the wrong type of guys. If you can relate, give me a thumbs up on this video. Lord knows I can relate to dating the wrong kind of guys in my past. I shouldn't add that, should I? <laughs> Considering, I mean, I guess the truth hurts and if the shoe fits, but Adam's an amazing person who just got caught up in a bad situation. The guys of my past, like he said in that one interview where he was like, so I'm not the worst, craziest boyfriend you ever had? No, babe, not even a little. Here's a fun fact. I know I've never called him babe in my whole entire life until just now on video. Yeah. People are like, what do you call him? I'm like, Adam, his name, what does he call you? Bro, mine. I know it's weird. Do you guys know the difference between a babe girl and a baby girl? Oh my God, tell me if you do or you don't and I'm gonna make a whole video about it because whoo, there is such a thing. I think I'm just gonna do it anyway. Okay, so let's get back to this story. So then Jamie is the other sister and Jamie is also had her little dabbling phase. She had her experimental phases, but Basically, overall, she cleaned herself up. She went to cosmetology school and she got a job managing a great clips. So both sisters were doing okay, although Jax was kind of in a situation where she was still dabbling with the wrong crowd. Regardless, they were so close. They were thicker than thieves. They were best friends. They knew each other in and out. They told each other everything. They were basically inseparable. So one night, Jax and Kelsey and Jax's boyfriend, we'll call him Steve, they were all hanging out at Jax's house and they're drinking and things are kind of getting a little bit escalated. You know, when you drink or when people drink and they're already kind of an aggressive type of a personality and he kind of had this past of a little bit of abuse with her. So things got heated. The more they drank, the drunker they got, the more heated things got, the more inhibitions went down tempers get, went up so he was a little sensitive who knew the wrong thing that somebody could say that would set him off and there it went jack said something wrong and steve has this automatic response where he's pissed off she can never do anything right and they start arguing back and forth and he got so mad that he pushed her down a whole entire flight of stairs so she tumbles down the stairs boom 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 and she gets to the bottom and she can't get up. She can't get up. And he goes down and he's hitting her more. And Kelsey doesn't know what to do. Her best friend, her sister, her blood, the person that she loves more than anybody else in this whole entire world, she just watched her get thrown down a flight of stairs, 
now she's fighting her her boyfriend is just beating her and her sister's not moving so she goes and she grabs the gun and she shoots him she shoots steve and now he's laid out the police come an ambulance comes and the police car takes away kelsey she's taken downtown and two separate ambulances take away Jax and steve Jax is taken immediately into all of these surgeries to try to fix the damage that was done to her back and her neck when she was thrown down those stairs and tumbled all the way down to the bottom and smacked her back on the floor. It was a cement floor, it was tile, whatever it was, it was a hard landing. And Steven, unfortunately, he bled out on the way to the hospital, so he was no longer with them. He lost his life. Jax went through all of these surgeries and unfortunately the damage in her cervical spine and her upper neck couldn't be fixed. She wound up becoming a C4 quadriplegic, quadriplegic? What is my prob? I can't speak today or any other day of the week. Bear with me. So she wound up becoming a C4 quadriplegic, meaning that she's paralyzed from the neck down. For the rest of her life, she will be confined to a wheelchair with max minimal 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 use of certain body parts but she really she can't move she's paralyzed from the neck down her sister wound up getting charged kelsey wound up getting charged with the of steve even though it was in defense of her sister even though she was scared for her sister's life and her own life she was still charged with 20 years to life in an illinois state women's prison once Jax healed and she was able to get around, even though she has all kinds of medical equipment that she needs with her on a daily basis, she has full-time aides, she still sets up times to go visit her sister. Well, the facility wasn't really too equipped to handle a quadriplegic, so they didn't really have rules set up around it, so they just kind of made them up on the fly when they dealt with Jax coming in to visit her sister. She has every right to do that, but unfortunately, they didn't know how to handle it. They kind of didn't want to be bothered with her. So one day she goes in with her aid and all of her medical equipment, and they wind up searching her for over 45 minutes. They toggle her around in her chair. She's being moved and brushed around all over the place. Now from being confined to her chair for a while, I think it's been a few years, she's gotten really weak. Her limbs are very fragile. It's very easy for her to break bones. She's lost all of her muscle tone because she's not using her muscles. She can't move. So she's getting toggled around in her chair, which can eventually lead to broken bones. It could lead to a lot of medical complications that you and I would never experience, but her being quadriplegic does. So between that and then searching all of her equipment, all of her aids, they make it really, really difficult for her to get in there. But she is tenacious and she is hell bent on getting in there to go see her sister her best friend the person who basically gave up her life to save hers she will go in there and see her and i could cry because oh my gosh if that was me and my sisters i would do the same exact thing for my sister i would oh okay so all of you guys with sisters or best friends or people who are really close to you, moms, I'm sure you can relate to the emotions that these sisters are going through. So finally on this day, they wheel her into the visit room and after a couple of times, they had done this before, kind of on the fly, and they decided that they didn't want to, have to deal with her being in the regular visit room with everybody else. So they put her off to this separate room. They bring out Kelsey she is shackled she is cuffed she is belly chained meaning that her handcuffs are chained to a chain around her waist so she really only has this much i can't even show you because i'm kind of let's see if i can let's see if i can I'm, kinda, I'm sitting on the floor but let's see if i could show you so she's chained like this and she really only has this much movement on her hands they also do that to adam when he travels i believe every inmate when they travel but adam is very extra chained or just like her people with a certain amount of time or above people with violent felonies are chained they're secured a little more when they travel is that necessary when they're taking her to the visit room to see her sister and then on top of it 
When they get her to the visit room, they uncuff the belly chain and they cuff her to the table. Now, I don't know if that's protocol for lifers. I don't know if that's protocol at their prisons for people with certain types of violent crimes, but it is excruciating for these women to see each other. It is so awful for each sister to see themselves in their own separate prison. One is in prison in her body and the other one is in actual prison. And either one of them would switch with the other at any given moment. That's how much they love and care about each other. Both sisters are completely sober now. Both sisters have recently found spirituality and God and I don't know exactly what, but they're both on a good path. So here is this little bow for you guys. Here's me wrapping it up in a positive manner. And this is a story of hope. Where in your life are you keeping yourself in your own little prison? Is it a prison of your mind? Is it a prison of your body? Is it because you won't speak up for yourself in situations where you know that you need to use your voice, but you're afraid to use it? You imprison yourself. Is it by staying in a relationship that you are so well aware has past its expiration date, but you're still holding on for some reason. Are you holding yourself captive and keeping yourself in prison in that relationship? Are you staying in a dead end job that you know you deserve so much more? There's so much more to life outside of that job, but you stay for whatever reason you are deciding to play small and keeping yourself within those confines and in that prison of that job. There are so many different examples. Where in your life are you keeping yourself in prison and how can you break free from those chains? Even if it's something that you can't just pick up and leave right now, if you just can't leave your job, if you're in a home that you can't stand because you can't afford to be someplace else, if you're living with family, let's say, because your loved one is incarcerated and you can't afford anything else, how can you start breaking free of those chains, at least in your mind, and start living your best life in spite of your circumstances. It's like the Viktor Frankl theory of you get to be a free man if you're inside of prison or a free woman if you're inside of prison with your thoughts, with your mind. You can be a free person with your mind. You can get past your circumstances with your mind. There's this beautiful story that goes around the internet and I'll leave you with it. There's these two men that are in a hospital. One man is, is laid down constantly. He can't sit up because of his disease. Well, the other man in the other bed comes his friend and they start telling each other stories. And he says, I can't sit up. So why don't you tell me what you see around you? And the man that could sit up said, oh, there's this window here and I get to see right out into the front, right out into the courtyard. And he would explain to him every day what the weather was like, the people that were walking by, all of the amazing things that he would see, what people were dressed like, what the weather was like, how people were laughing. They were sitting out there having lunch. They were enjoying their time and he would go into such amazing detail that the man that was stuck laying down could live vicariously and he lived for these stories. He was so depressed before he became roommates with this man because he was stuck in this laid down position and he wasn't feeling well and everything. So one day he wakes up and the man is no longer there. So the nurses come into the room. He asked what happened and unfortunately the man that was sitting by the window had passed away. The man who was laying down said, can you please do me a favor? To the nurse he said, can you please tell me what you see outside of the window? And she said, what are you talking about? There is no window. It's just a cinder block wall. That man made up all of those stories. He explained what his friend told him was going on outside of those windows. And the nurse said, well, it was a cinder block wall, but your friend was also blind. In his mind, he was a free man and he was helping his friend be a free man. They were living their best versions of their lives. They were getting outside of the chains of their own bodies and their own disabilities and their own prisons with these stories and with 
their imagination. So I pass that along to you guys. How can you start living your best life despite the confines that you're stuck in, despite your very own prisons that you're in right now, despite the fact that your loved one is actually in a physical prison right now? Because if those two beautiful sisters, Kelsey and Jax, could be living their best lives while in the prison of their own body and in a physical prison. What is your excuse and what's mine? I love you guys. Keep staying hopeful. Keep staying strong. Keep loving strong. And keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being over. And Lord knows I am too. Lots of love from my heart to all of your hearts. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. And if you guys want to share a story with me, you can comment below or email strongprisonwives at gmail.com. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up before you go. I would so, so, so appreciate that. Love you and I'll see you in the next one.